My son needs a coach like you. Now he'll take your team from good to, oh my God. I don't coach high school kids. All my kids is 14 years. Jace turned 14 yesterday. These programs are where the best talent is getting their start. These are future NBA stars. O'Shea, welcome to Take Line. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, so in Swagger, you star as a, a former standout prep basketball player named Icon. How'd you, how'd you prepare for the role? How'd you get ready for it? Funny story. Um, I was prepared for another role. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was... Uh, I was supposed to be a different, uh, uh, a different character in the series, and that was my my first uh, go around with Swagger. And you know, when you send your sharks, your agents in to get uh, to get that bottom line, sometimes they push a little too hard. And you know, Apple was like, "All right, bro, th- you know, thanks for buying the phone. I'll get your ass out of here." But then, <laughs> and then, um, while well, I was doing promo. Uh, for a, a film I did, uh, Long Shot, I got a call. I got a call from my agents like, yo, guess what's on the table? I was like, all right, what's popping? They were like, yeah, Swagger's back on. I was like, oh, okay, season two? And they're like, uh, no, season one still. I was like, how is that possible? They're like, well, there was a situation with the lead, and uh, basically they want you to be the lead now. And I was like, oh, well. What? <sighs> That sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> That's and, uh, yeah, crazy. you know, I um, I had I played basketball my whole life. Coached um, coached my my younger brother, so I knew about that element of you know helping a a young man succeed, a team succeed, and do what they think is unthinkable. Um, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Um, I play Ike. You know, former former star of the city. Um, you know, he he used to be the man, but my mom has a saying: uh, "Used to is a rooster that don't crow no more." So he got to switch up. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I love that. I love that, and it's interesting because the show is executive produced by Kevin Durant, based off of his youth basketball experiences. So I'm just curious, like. One, was that kind of wild? You said you was a hooper your whole life. So was that wild that Kevin Durant, like that world, the intersection of sports and entertainment crossed to where now KD, who is still a superstar in the league, is an executive producer. And then was there anything that surprised you about the world, like that world as you made the show? Um, Yeah, first of all, it's 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 crazy to be able to work uh, with and for a guy like Kevin Durant. Um you know, he's a an inspiration for so many of us in the black community, um, you know, especially those who look at look to basketball as a as an outlet, you know, as a way to express themselves or maybe a way to get away from some of the things that life throws at you. Uh, I really love the story because we've all heard you know, you always hear the whispers of how shady, uh, you know, the the inner workings of that side of things are, you know, when whenever you have kids and money involved, probably some shady business going down. And I love that we get to shine a light on on that subject. And it's not just whispers anymore. It's brought to the forefront of, you know, the people over at Apple and CBS are are doing their part to shine a light uh, on the subject. And I'm glad to be a part of a show that will hopefully educate and teach these young athletes how to protect themselves. And not just the athletes, but young people uh, all over, all over the country in whatever situation that they're in. We hope that swagger will help educate, strengthen, and give them the swagger needed to prevail. Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, this show deals with, you know, the intersection of of youth athletics, corruption, what happens when you have a lot of money pouring into a sport that is primarily based around kids. Um, w- what are some of the kind of like real life societal issues that the show is is trying to explore? And were there any particular like actual 
incidents, events that you are, are going to are going to find its way up through the show? Um, obviously, um, the the one you cannot ignore is uh, social injustice. And, um, you know, the what happened with with George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor and all these names that that have become implanted in our, our minds uh, with tragedy. You know, it's not it's not when you remember someone's name, it should not be tragic. It should not be something that that causes pain. I know when I when the time happens where where I go, when people speak my name, I, I wanted to bring a level of joy. And, you know, with with the the way that the social climate is now, like I said, it, it's it, it's it's impossible to ignore. Of course, we speak on that. We speak on uh, the pandemic you know, um, how the world had to shift on the fly, figuring it out as we went. And um, we speak on, obviously, with the things that young athletes have to go through, but young people as well. Some people come from abusive homes. Some people are, are you know, put into situations, young ladies put into situations where they feel like they don't have a voice or anyone listening for that matter. We speak on that as well. Um, we we also touch on um, people moving here uh, with a hope and a dream, and you're the only one the family can rely on because you're the one that's good at basketball. Like it's, it's all those pressures that people might not know that so many have to go through in the position that the kids are in. You know, that's a big you you hit on a lot of so basically swagger hits on a lot of big topics that are current and relevant right now. You know, the stuff that you were saying, that's relevant right now. Women that don't have voices, you know, tragedy attached to people's names that shouldn't be. And even the hoop dreams, you know, there's plenty of people we see with name, image and likeness. Now, a lot of athletes may be able to stay in college because they can make money. But we saw before that there will be athletes that left college to try to make money for their families, those hoop dreams. And I know you said you were a hooper all your life. That's one thing to be a hooper all your life. But how did you feel having to hoop on camera, though, and be an icon and be this superstar hooper? Because, listen, I hoop hoop. So I'm a, I'm watching like, OK, I can see yeah. he used to play a little bit, a little something, something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's great when you script it to win. You know, that's the best thing. <laughs> That'll do it. That's you know, nice. I'm going, I'm going in with mad confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's a done. Bet the over. I'm about to kill it right Bet now. <laughs> but yeah, That's it's uh, it was great. Um, something that I really wanted uh, coming in was to earn the respect of my guys, of the team. You know, we have, of course, there are some of our players who are just actors. And then there are some of our players who really hoop and they will call you out. They will dog you out. And <laughs> it is a pack, a pack of wolves. And so I have to earn their respect or they go, you know, they got, they go have some choice words. It's, I actually uh, love it's, hearing that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you can't, you can't just be out there uh, fugazing. It's, it's, it's important. <laughs> It's important, and especially when you got Reggie Rock, you know, our our, our captain saying, you know, we're not going to cut these and just like edit it where it looks like it went in. Right? You got to really, you hit really got to make it. Yeah, you really got to hit them. And so, you know, if we, if you miss, we're taking another take. And you don't want to be up there and be like, Shay's shot take 67. <laughs> you know, you don't pre yeah, you can't, you can't have that. So you better bring it. Uh, it was fun. It was a good time. But of course, you know, scripted W's are still a W in the book. Hey, it's a dub, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, KD, of course, the, the EP of the show. Uh, what was his involvement? Like how, how, how much, how into like the notes giving process was he? How much direction did he give to what y'all were doing? And uh, at any point, did you try to tamper and get him on the Lakers? <laughs> um, yeah, well, Kevin, no. <laughs> Everyone knows that I call him Kevin should have been a Laker Durant. And, <laughs> you know, 
Kevin, Kevin really laid out the bones of what he wanted uh, this project to be. And then from there, he picked the right people to entrust with uh, with his idea. And he was uh, he had his phone uh, ready for for any type of messages that I, I needed from him. I asked him um, about a little bit of the player coach dynamic. I asked him, you know, what did or some of the things that Steve Kerr would say to him and like, you know, all those things from the professional level. Um, I also asked him uh, uh, what were some of the things that kept him motivated? You know, your world champion, gold medalist, uh, uh, you know, all stars, MVP, all these things, you know, what really keeps him going? It was the same question that I asked the late, great Kobe Bryant in our first and only phone call conversation was, you know, what's that, what's that fire in you that keeps you burning and wanting more? And then the last question I asked him was at the time, was he aware that the Los Angeles Lakers were the 2020 <laughs> NBA champions? <laughs> and then he stopped answering my text and like, they I don't, know, I, like, I don't know what it is, but I haven't really asked any more questions after that one. <laughs> well, listen, dude, you mentioned it, so I have to ask, you know, the Lakers, y'all all right. You got LeBron, AD, Russ, um, you got to be feeling good. Look, yeah, you got to be feeling good. So <laughs> what predictions? You got any predictions, y'all, the champs this year? What's up? All right, now, I'm not going to be that guy who comes <laughs> up here and, and tell y'all some, some, you know, convoluted lie. But let me just tell you, we're going to win the championship this year. Oh! <laughs> I don't care what nobody has to say. I'll argue all day on Twitter. You will never see me count out the Lakers. I, I they are, they are everything to me. And I want banner number eighteen. All right, my blood is purple, my bones are gold, and they don't want it with us. Westbrook, I need if I could get Russell Westbrook and Carmelo a ring on the Lakers. You said oh. if I can, I'm just, you know, if, if I, I can, can do it. <laughs> If I can figure out how to get this done, God. Oh, oh, oh I just love it. I love goodness. it because, you know, once you win a chip with, with the Lakers, you're, you're, you're a part of the franchise forever. Yep. And, and if, oh, if Russell <laughs> and Carmelo <laughs> can get one on the Lakers, that all time Lakers team is so good. <laughs> it's disgusting. Oh Our gosh. bench alone would be disgusting. It's filthy. The show is swagger, y'all. Yeah. It premieres on Friday, October 29th on Apple TV Plus. O'Shea Jackson Jr., thank you so much for joining Take Line. Thank y'all for having me. <laughs>